Yo, 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 Troublemaker back up in this piece, and I'm here to give you a Candace Wonderland Halloween Haunt review. I see him rocking this nice purple hoodie with the uh, yellow writing ink that you can get at Candace Wonderland at one of their stores. I got this at the Leviathan shop. And then here is my trusty dusty skeleton key, and on the back here you see it says, Cannes Wonderland Halloween Haunt, that part glows in the dark, and uh, you get this key when you go and you purchase um, what is known as the Fright Lane Pass, and uh, it gives you access to these mazes and these uh, skeleton key rooms and these other mazes. Um, what it also does is that it just gives you a faster lane, living life in the fast lane, to get scared before the sun comes back up. You know what I mean? I mean, scene, scene. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to use this as a tool to help me jog my memory of everything that I did because there was a lot going on. I went, um, I actually went like a Saturday and the Sunday of this past Thanksgiving weekend. And, um, I'm just going to share my experiences with y'all and, yeah, so you can catch a grip of understanding. And yes, I know you are wondering, and I will tell you, that is Bath and Body Works right there. It is. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, I do like the shop there. What you know about that? Anyways. So, um, I'm going to start off with the Asylum. It is fitting enough to say that on Saturday, we happen to walk right by it. On Sunday, we happen to walk right by it. So on Sunday night, at the very, very end, it was the last thing we did, but yet it's the first on this list. I think they did it within uh, alphabetical order now that I'm looking at it. Never took that in before. But yes, anywho, um, the asylum was well decorated, um, you know, very well detailed. Uh, the rooms were structured in a way that like it's more of like a wide open space for you to walk through. Um, they did have some props from previous years, but they uh, applied them differently um, within the uh, setup, so that was refreshing. And uh, the monsters look crazy gruesome, and the monsters working in there looked extremely enthusiastic, even though it was the end of the night. So you know that just you know it's just like they're they're getting like they're loving the thrills and the scares, and like they're very they're very in characters and they're very psychotic. Up in the asylum so I definitely uh, definitely enjoyed that one um, now we're gonna move on and before we continue to move on I will say shout out to um, the monsters at the front gate you know uh, they do their thing every single year you know they they bring that level of of intensity like they're out there all night with all that open space entertaining you guys coming into the park walking around from uh, one end of the park to the other, you know, it's great to purposely just walk around there just to be entertained by them because they are fantastic and they're really chill too. Um, and they're very helpful, by the way. So uh, yeah, so let's go next to, what do I got here? I'm going to go down this side of the list first just so, you know, I can talk about the skeleton and key rooms along with their mazes, you know. So I don't be, be jumping back and forth and stuff. So um, up next is Club Blood. Club Blood. Oh, Club Blood. How I love the Club Blood. You know, you got the vampire strippers, which, you know, attractive as hell and very entertaining. And then you got the music pumping, jumping. So um, when I went the uh, first night, um, and I believe even, what did we do the second night? I think we did that first the second night as well. Um, mind you, fir first night I went with my cousins. For the first time together, we went there. Like they came other times when uh, when I was working there, but we didn't get to run into each other. And then it was like one of my younger cousins' first time going there ever. And it's funny because like she lives in Richmond Hill, and so like I was excited for her to be there because I was just like, yo. You know, like, she knows Wonderland is this happy family park with awesome thrill rides and stuff, you know. And then it was crazy for, to see for her to see it transformed at night, you know, with all of, like, um, 
with all of like the monsters and the atmosphere and just the amount of effort that goes into to the Halloween Haunt event, you know. So she definitely like was thrilled and excited to see it, and um, she was fortunate enough to see two shows. She she they saw Tox uh, Toxic City or whatever Toxicity, and um, also that uh, Illusion show or whatever that's near Thrill Burger. So um, they got to see that because I was standing in line for uh, Leviathan for fifty minutes five zero. Dude, that's nuts. Like, that Saturday night, the entire, entire line was filled. They used every single pathway possible. You would think it was, like, the first year Leviathan got released or something. Like, holy moly. <laughs> um, But, yeah, so within that time, like, you know, her and her brother didn't want to go on. So they went, while they waited, they, they watched a couple shows. You know, fair enough. I would have, too. Um, okay, so yes, let's go back to Club Blood. Uh, Club Blood, Club Blood was pumping, it was fun, you know, went through dancing. Uh, we took, like, a photo together, um, when I went on Saturday, and, uh, we never, you know, we never really stayed to sort of, like, uh, uh, see the photo develop, though, because it was a lot of people. Um, the Saturday night was very, very busy, very, uh... So, like, Club Blood didn't have that bad of a lineup, though. And then we walked over to the Bloodshed, and uh, we were able to go into that one. Um, okay, but, so I was dancing and stuff, and then when I went on the Sunday night into Club Blood, one of their uh, maze attendants was also feeling it pumping, and he was dancing. Um, the monster, I, I, like, I like the maze, but I think, like, the fun, pumping, loving you know, music that they're bumping sort of takes away from, like, the factor that this is a place to get scared, not necessarily a place you're coming to to dance. But as a previous employee, I do know that our the guests come there to be scared and to be entertained. So you kind of mix and blend the two, and voila, this is your result. You know, so it's definitely not the scariest maze, but again, um, it is well-detailed, well-structured with... Uh, with its specified rooms and I don't know if there was a VIP area this time because I know in the past they used to have the VIP areas uh, so you know along with there being like skillets and keys and stuff like that for alternate rooms um, you know Club Blood is notorious for having for being one of the first mazes that can take you down two different paths so I think that was cool um, I didn't get to see it both nights that I went and I did question it, but, you know, I guess I didn't ask the right people. So, anywho, that was, um, that was still sick. Uh, very entertaining, too. Vampire strippers. Okay, next uh, on this list is Sci-Fi House. Sci-Fi House, Sci-Fi House. Okay, the first night of Sci-Fi House was better than the second night. Um, the first night tripped me out so bad, because... Practically, there was, like, two people that had, like, a uh, similar outfit. So, practically, it's either that or it was the same guy. It just uh, happened to be at the beginning, at the end, at the end. <laughs> so, there's this dude that was, like, in this, like, um, this, like, uh, uh, this, like, jean jacket or leather jacket or something. But he looks like a normal, regular guest. And so, what he does is, like, he stands with his back turned to you and he's standing there in line you know and you're kind of like wondering like and he's pretending to walk and you're like why isn't this guy moving up and then he turns around and he's a monster and like it makes you jump and he doesn't even, you know he doesn't even have to scream or go rah or anything like that like just his presence alone surprises you and it, it scares you it makes you jump um that same night i saw a gorilla in uh in the sci-fi house i found that to be really unique and interesting I like the floating baby they had um, in one of the rooms, and uh, I I think though the maze is uh you know there's a lot like the detail that they put into it is is dope, but it doesn't give the monsters enough space to move around. So, like the most one of the big biggest rooms they have in that in the sci-fi house was the kitchen, which uh, has a trippy effect with uh, these cabinets, um, and they like they open and close on their own like. Pff, 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 
you know so like that trips you out along with the monsters that like if they see you you know like like they see you but then like they'll do something else to make a big bang and to scare you and you won't see it coming you know but also at the same time with like the bang 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 um and then you you sort of just get used to them you know what wherever they're making that sound if they're smashing their hand off the wall to make you jump with a special sound effect or off the table or off something like that um so i just you know like the sci-fi house is dope but i i know i consider it you know they should probably take away some of uh uh, uh some of the what do you call it decorations home you know some of the tables or some of the furniture furniture and um, give the monsters, you know, uh, uh, more space to sort of run, charge at the guests to make to make the scare factor jump a little more. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely good. Definitely, you got its own theme going on. It's pretty sick. You know what I mean? And uh, let's see. Oh yeah, and at the very end, I fell for the same thing again. Yo, know, I ran into a similar looking monster with like this like varsity jacket or whatever. You know, he just looks like a regular guest, but he turns around and he's, he scares you because you're like, whoa, I thought you were, you know, one of us. <laughs> you're one, you're a monster. Oh, crazy. It's cool. It was fun. It was definitely fun, man. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's the sci-fi house. And I sort of, and then when I went on the Sunday night, um, I sort of just, you know, I walked through it. Like, the lady, like, punched a hole in my, um, in my, uh, Frightling Pass. But it honestly didn't help because, like, you know, it, you know, I was still caught walking with the same crowd that I practically could have just walked up and walked behind, you know. So, yeah, that was sort of that was sort of a waste there. But you can't, you know, you can't predict it. It just happens. Um, how fast you're gonna get through some mazes and and whatnot. Uh, corn stalkers. Okay, so I can safely say that um. On my first night going, Corn Stalkers was the last maze we did, and then on the second night, it was it was one of the last ones, um, but because uh, somehow we were running out of time on the second night. Like the first night makes a little sense because it was super packed. Um, we we kind of killed some time waiting on the Leviathan line, and uh, we showed up later than seven o'clock. We got in the park by past 8 30 you know what i mean so but the second night we showed up like 705 and second night was with my friend and it was his birthday and stuff like that so i can drop a link to his video of um of him filming off of his cell phone just us walking around the shore sort of sharing like how we've been feeling that night through his uh he on his on his page i'll share a link but um yes for for corn stalkers you know, when I went with my cousins and stuff, we waited in line and stuff, and uh, then we, we sort of skipped the picture-taking part, because um, we just wanted to get right to the uh, maze, because it was one of my cousin's favorite mazes, and it was really funny, because there was, like, corn stalkers, like, I was, t I was basically saying that Sci-Fi House has, like, a small, you know, doesn't have big enough rooms, corn stalkers, man, those guys... They barely have any room to basically maneuver around themselves. It's it's pretty it's pretty nuts because it's a, it's pretty tight space, but it's wicked how it's like out in the forest, out in the dark. You know, it's just like you get access to some parts of Wonderland that you don't real you don't get through any other time of the season. You know, and so it like that is something to really take in. You know, it's pretty special. Um, now these actors in the uh, Corn Stalkers, they must get like a lot of endurance and exercise. Because, like, majority of them are, like, hanging off of these, like, posts. And, um, dude, it's it's sometimes actually kind of hard to tell which one's a monster, which one's a dummy. It's so trippy. I'm not even joking. And, like, the first guy at the very, you know, like, at the, the first scare of the maze jumped out and got us. Like, it was, it, he was good. He was good, man. And, like... Even, I, I'm walking through, I'm chilling, you know, because, like, with the uh, big crowds, you do have um, the typical response of a conga line. So, you know, I was happy when the scares did come to me, definitely. 
So, um, and then, you know, last year when I did work there, um, I happened to ask some guests like, oh, what was your favorite maze? And ironically, they said Cornstalkers. And I was kind of shocked because I knew how small it was. But, uh, you know, certain times of the night and whatever, it can get really hyperactive in there. So, like, they, they definitely put in a lot of uh, 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 momentum into their maze, into their scares. Yeah, so Cornstalkers definitely um, working for their due, you know what I mean? Alright, so now we're going to, oh yeah, sorry, and on the second night, we got pushed into the picture taking thing when we got our picture taken but when we went to club blood on the second night when i went to club blood on the second night with the group i was with we didn't take our picture but happened on corn stalkers we did but yet we didn't stay again to see it develop so yeah um okay so now we're moving into the ruins okay now the ruins is a special maze dude because it's literally like inside the mountain um the first night with the fam, we didn't get to go into the ruins or the Louisiana Scream because the lines for that was humongous. It was like, you know, it was like a 2010 Clowns at Midnight line. Like, it was long. <laughs> long. So, literally, the ruins, um, let's see. The ruins is pretty trippy. Uh, what the night that I did get to go, which was the second night, because we had access with the Fright Lane passes to basically advance our. We felt like VIP. Plus, I was wearing like my Halloween hot leather jacket. Definitely felt like VIP. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, we got all the way to the front, um, front front line access, and went through the uh, the ruins. And it's really trippy because if you have a phobia of snakes, dude, like you are gonna lose your shit. There's snakes, like, everywhere you turn. Like, it, it's crazy. Um, the inside of the mountain, you know, the, the mazes inside the mountain is pretty crazy. It's pretty sick. I find it insane how they have, uh, they have, like, four things. This, they are, this mountain is so interactive now, practically, because you have, you have, a ride going through the mountain on one side then you have a ride going through the mountain on the other side then you have a ride going through the mountain which is the vortex and then you find space to also throw in two mazes like that's amazing you know so definitely it was worth the time and effort that they put in to um to the construction of of all these things because it all it all took some time but the new additions definitely bring some spark and some life back into the mountain Plus, on the front, uh, during the Halloween Haunt Decker um, time, uh, where would they naturally would have the Starlight Spectacular, they went and they had um, like these Halloween decorations. So, like you'd see like a pumpkin on the front in the mountain, or the Reaper. You know, you, you'd see a lot of cool like Halloween things, like spiders and stuff like that. So, it was definitely. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So. The, you know, the impact of the mountain itself is, is humongous, it's huge, it's dope. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very unique too, because I don't know any other parks that, you know, can utilize a mountain and, and, you know, formulate haunted houses in there. So that was definitely something to look at. Um, yeah, as far as the ruins go, though, uh, <laughs> The night that I did get to go in, it was funny because it was the first maze we... Oh, okay. The Ruins was the first maze we did that night. Yes, now I remember. Um, on the Sunday night. So, um, I went with one of my friends who has uh, not been to Wonderland before. And um, so we sort of said, you know what? Because I've been to Halloween Hop before as a monster and as a guest, right? So I know... I kind of know what to expect, so we kind of pushed him through, and we're like, you lead the way, Patrick, you know, do it, have fun, we're right behind you, <laughs> you know, giving him, like, the full experience, because when we walked through the um, the ruins, it wasn't that packed yet, so we were able to, you know, ha basically have, like, that full-fledged experience of, like, oh, yeah, like, we, you know, like, we are getting this experience, we're going to be scared, Eventually, we did meet up to some people in line. So, like, 
for the little little bit of time that we did have the uh you know the park or sorry like that that maze to ourselves it was it was definitely like a breath of fresh air because it's hard to get that you know when you go to these smaller haunted amusement parks around the city and stuff um you know like they send you through in the groups you come in so like you do get that full-fledged experience but at wonderland you get limited amount of time they have to service more guests and stuff like that so you know you kind of like like you either get it or you don't just depends on the night you go uh yeah so the snake thing like their big thing in the ruins is snakes so yeah and there's snakes all over that place it's crazy um okay so now we're gonna move into skeleton room haunted houses slash skeleton key rooms uh the first on the other side is bloodshed okay bloodshed practically the bloodshed is a returning maze and it, i don't think it was there last year or it might if it was i don't remember but basically um bloodshed did disappear for a short period of time so with bloodshed it's like you're practically like in a farmhouse and there's like hanging pieces of meat everywhere and people that you run into are practically like a, you know members of a family that have now that have now disappeared um i feel uh like the monsters in bloodshed don't get mad at me monsters i'm sorry but like i feel like you guys need to continue to work on your scares and um definitely put you know uh uh they just work on your scares, put more impact, more emphasis, and, and find out what works for you, you know, and find out who you could, uh, uh, what your best, what you as a personal person, your best target market is, you know, and just work and feed off of that type of vibe, you know what I mean? So, yeah, just, um, I, I, I feel like I could be wrong, you know, but like both times when I walk through bloodshed, I do, I do consider, like, the monsters in bloodshed should, uh, should practice more on their scare factors, you know, step their game up, definitely come up and, like, put more impact and, and, and fierce on their scares, that's just my opinion, if you guys got scared in bloodshed, that's dope, that means that they're already doing it, you know, but, um, that's just, that's just my opinion, if you guys happen to watch this, please don't be mad, I'm just saying, um, because like you guys have a, a good good scenery to work with and a lot of crazy bloody stuff to work with like and 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 just crazy imagery to work with so like your maze is set so you know go in there and like strike first with your scares um okay now we're getting into the skeleton key challenges holy shit okay so this little baby right here got me and my homies into the skeleton key room the one from bloodshed you go in there and the lady basically tells you to help her find her key now there's gonna be like this crazy uh table full of like um dead pig dead pig heads and other dismembered uh, parts of an animal and there's gonna be hanging meat and stuff and it's crazy and you're gonna have to stick your hand into this concoction that's in that's like in this table and you're gonna help have to help this crazy lady please don't hurt me crazy lady find your damn key otherwise she will yell at you and tell you to get out okay like I'm not playing like she is not someone to tick off okay find the damn key and give it to her so she can be happy, you know what I mean? And there is uh, paper towels and hand uh, sanitizer to help clean your hand after. I am upset because I was wearing my Wonderland Halloween hot jacket and it did get messed up. However, I did get it clean. So it is possible to clean your stuff after. <laughs> find my key, okay, okay, we're gonna try to find the key. And it was funny because when I was in there, she was yelling, me, yelling at me to find her key, and then my friend was like, find her key, and I'm like, I'm trying to. And then he's like, just let me know when you want my help. And I'm like, yeah, right now would be great. <laughs> you know, so that was dope. Um, Clowns at Midnight, my favorite maze. 
absolutely dopeness. I, I, I'm a huge, like, Insane Clown Posse fan, and so I'm down with the Wicked Clowns, and I like, I like clown-themed, crazy, serial killer clown stuff. So, like, um, basically, I found their maze to be, the, to be different this year. Like, they had a lot of, um, a lot of big attractions in their rooms. Like, they had big attractions before, but these were bigger. And it was cool because, like, when you thought you were going to lose out on seeing all the sights around, no. The maze makes sure that you see everything well detailed and all that stuff. Um, however, I, uh, it was kind of timid. I think the, the monsters and clowns didn't really try to scare me or scare us that much both times we went through. Um, a few people were trying, definitely. But, you know, some were just sort of just, like, just chilling there and not really doing much. You know, come on, guys. It's Halloween haunt. You're monsters. Get out. Get down. Scare mofos. And just have fun. People are there to get scared. Be entertained. Um, I have a suggestion if you're still watching this 26-minute video. Okay. I have a suggestion. Um, back in the day when I read the description for the Clowns of Midnight, you know, uh, uh, like, conspiracy theory of how the maze came to be, it said that it... You know, there was a fire. So, I think you, like, I think next time you go to do a layout plan for this, I'm thinking that you should try to maybe make, ha have there be, like, really trippy, like, orange, yellow, and red lights throughout the maze and have random spots of heat. Just really fiery stuff. So that, you know, it's like, it's now like the clowns at midnight or like the clowns from hell. Or not necessarily hell, but like they're still doing their acts and they're still scaring you, you know. But they're coming back with like a fire, a passion to continue because um, they died by fire, now they shall live by fire. You know, it's like fight fire with fire, you know. So I think you guys should implement that. Maybe make a hole or like like a hole in the tent that looks like smoke is coming out of it. Or maybe make something that... Um, they might not want to rip the tent because that is expensive material, but maybe put like, uh, you know, put an addition on there so that you can have like, so you can have such a fact, you know, it's like the clown tent's on fire, you're going in, you know, there's random waves of heat, there's random orange and yellow and red lights and you're feeling the flames, you're sweating in some spots, you don't know what's going on, you're freaking out, you're losing your mind. You know, and um, yeah, but like you know, their layout and the well details they got for that maze, they put a lot of effort into it. I noticed it took away the three D glasses; they weren't selling them this year. Um, so and it was really funny because I was thinking of bringing back my three D glasses, but Mother Noose isn't even around, so I didn't even, I didn't really even need them. Uh, I'm pretty sure Mother Noose will make a return one year or sometime in the future. But, uh, but yeah. And, uh, the Clowns at Midnight Carnival. Carnival. Um, Scare Zone. You guys are always top notch, always entertaining, always friendly, and always, like, ready to scare. You know, like, you guys are bomb. Like, I, when I was there both nights, you know, it was just like you guys were hyperactive, running around, you know, basically entertaining crowds. Like, it is a passion for you guys. And I real, I, you know, it's, I feel the positivity and I feel the craziness. And I guess I'm a little bit biased because I do like scary clown stuff. But yeah, you know, like, you guys are top notch and dope. Um, okay. Now, the skeleton key room for Clowns at Midnight was quite interesting and a little bit disappointing. So practically, there was, you, when you go in, first of all, while you're waiting, there's this trippy, um, there's this trippy, like, uh, uh, like, spinning wheel, sort of like, 
psychedelic almost like just like spin thing it just trips you out and then you go inside and then there's this girl that comes through and she told she tells you to turn the crank because there's, there's this giant like toy box and so you turn it and turn it and turn it eventually she's like stop turning the crank i'm like okay they yell at you a lot <laughs> but in all good fun and then um you know a clown comes out, I'm not going to tell you exactly where, but they, a clown does come out to give you a fright. So, and I was, I did get scared because I didn't see it coming. Um, so, one thing that does upset me a little bit is that, you know what, I, I can't really, okay, I'm not even going to. All right, you know what? I'm not gonna tell you exactly. That's a clown secret. You gotta, you gotta go do it yourself. If, uh, if after November first, you know, no one has really explained what happens exactly after you turn that crank, then I will, uh, I might come back and tell you, but not now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and trust me, I know, like, I'm telling you what the skeleton key challenges are, but for you to really experience it, you do need to go out yourself, buy them, and, uh, you know, basically experience it for yourself, because, like, if you don't, you're just going to be one of those people that goes, oh, I never did that, you know, and then you're going to be like, oh, man, I had, like, 12 nights out of the entire month of October to do so, and I never took opportunity of it, so work on that get on that now buy your pass now and go friday okay so coming up next is the terror of london maze terror of london also with the skeleton key room my least favorite skeleton key room anyways okay terror of london dopeness i love it because there is a lot of like, um, pretty ladies. Because mind you, like in Terror of London, it's sort of like a dedication to Jack the Ripper, and he was killing prostitutes. So there are, you know, some lovely ladies in there that will frighten you. So don't get too close, dude. Don't. <laughs> um, something I do find funny is one of the, uh, when you're walking through the maze, the, you know, there's like a market, like a, like a, like a, a suit like a, a food market type area like an outside street sort of thing and it's pretty funny because it's like this one guy just goes come and smell my fish <laughs> i was like what you know um at this point i don't even remember if we got yeah we did go through terror of london both times both nights that i did go i just don't remember the order i did that in doesn't matter skeleton key room Okay, let me just tell you this, when you go through Skeleton Key, or sorry, when you go to do this challenge, if you are a, like, returning Halloween Haunt customer, you're going to have some shades of Miner's Revenge in there, plus you're going to have a little phobia of rats. You heard me, rats. Plus, you better adapt to the darkness, okay? Let's... That's what you got to know about the Terror of London Skeleton Key Room. Okay, I'm not giving it all away. I didn't even really give it totally. I didn't tell you where to find the key. I didn't even tell you if there really is a key in Bloodshed. You know, or maybe I did. But, yeah, as I'm doing this video, I'm starting to realize that, like, I'm going to talk about the Skeleton Key Rooms, but I'm not going to explain the well thought out detail of it to you. Um, but yeah, and if you just heard that, clearly my Skype just went off. Anyways, moving on. Streets of the Undead! Undead! Alright, so yeah, Streets of the Undead. Um, first night we went through, uh, didn't do the Skeleton Key Room, second night did. Um, first night was funny, because... Well, my cousin, he was all, like, <laughs> when we walked in the first room, there's, like, 
it's like a clothing store sort of thing and she was he looked like he was ready to shop or something it was funny and they must have been like what is this guy doing and then um you know streets of the undead i think they should uh i think they should update some of their rooms because i did see some familiar ones um one thing that i think had a different layout from the first to the second night i went was the room with the cars um i think the first night i went i only saw one car and then the second night I went, after I came out of the skills and key room, I saw about two cars. So I didn't, it's either that or I just didn't pay attention the first night. Um, but the monsters are hyperactive, you know. And um, while we were in there, we, uh, we saw DJ Danzo, as you guys all know from the former channel. And uh, so yeah, he, he works up in there, so when you go through... If you do recognize him, you know, he will get you because he's hyperactive and he's crazy. And I'm not telling you where he is. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so we, like, we know him. So we're like, we said what up. You know what I mean? Code names, guys. Code names. That's how you get the loopholes through stuff nowadays. And, um, yeah. The, basically the skeleton key room, though, consists of. This was like the, uh, the first time that we got to do a room as a group of four because all the other skeleton key rooms allowed you to go through two at a time for some reason. So practically this one has to do with like, it, it is a zombie theme type of thing. And practically you kind of have to find a cure for the zombies. That's, that's practically what you have to do so like Halloween Haunt this year has gotten really interactive with the skeleton key rooms they're you know they're pretty dope um and yeah so what I um my favorite room in Streets of the Undead definitely is the strobe light room because it trips you out dude because like it just like it flashes and then someone's there and then they're over there next it's just it's cr mad crazy I love strobe lights and, and Halloween Haunt mazes. I think they're amazing. Okay. Allison Azen. You know who you are. Okay. So, next we are going to the final maze with the last skeleton key room, Louisiana Scream. Now, because uh, the ruins and Louisiana Scream actually are kind of like joint mazes, um, this was the first skeleton key room we did. As far as Louisiana Scream goes, it's well thought out. It's well put together as far as like the atmosphere for it. You know, Louisiana Scream is, you know, it's got like a voodoo touch to it. Plus it's got like a lot of, um, uh, the hell are those things called? You know, those, it's got a lot of lanterns and stuff. Um, it's like a formation of kind of like blood of the bayou. You know what I mean? So, which was a former maze in Halloween Hunt as well. So, Louisiana Scream is, uh, I think, seriously, one day they should just incorporate fried chicken into this maze, though. You know? And, like, just have some crazy, like, old lady just there, like, you want some fried chicken? And then probably pull out, like, a butcher axe and just go, Shh, well, then come here and let me cook you, or something like that. You know, you guys can probably come up with something way more creative, but that's just, like, a tip for like something that'd be funny that I wouldn't mind seeing. Now, Louisiana Screams Skeleton Key Room. Um, I'm just gonna let you know about this. Practically, it's like an urban legend. It's one of the urban legends. I know there's plenty of them, but it does involve a mirror. And uh, just better watch out. That that's what I'm gonna say about that. Um. Let's talk about the scare zone uh, I worked there last year, um, the uh, Ghostly Pines. Ghostly Pines was well decorated this year. Um, there was like some, uh, like, okay, so there was like this graveyard sort of plot place right in front of Time Warp that I noticed um, had some more decorations. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, also, I think like there's like these like pillars 
near like the beginning of it or the end depending on which way you're walking um that sort of reminded me of like a little roman touch to it um ghostly pines uh i didn't i didn't really get scared scared uh walking through it though because like as i was walking through it the majority of the monsters were busy um entertaining other guests and whatnot whether scaring them or taking photos or you know being interactive helping them out and stuff like that so yeah like i just every single time i walked through like they were busy you know and plus to be fair i did walk through in the late like the late hours of haunt not the early ones so if we did go through in the early hours i probably it probably would have been really just like because like i worked there last year and let me tell you it's like a team effort like a domino effect you get scared one place and you're gonna get scared in the second spot and the third because you can run and there'll be someone there to get you so yeah um now there's also on the other end of the park some really high competition a brand new uh, uh a brand new scare zone that was formerly a maze back in the day not back in the day maybe like two years ago steampunks the steampunk scare zone now i didn't think too much of it but let me tell you something both nights saturday and sunday the steampunks scared me they are like well organized and like they're just they're amped you know they're probably like yeah we're the freshest scare zone on the block we're gonna tear this up you know so like they definitely brought it and uh i was pleased to say i i was originally supposed to be part of that last year but they didn't like i don't know it's just like not enough people were available for the position so got moved over to ghostly pines last year um yeah but this year steampunk really you know the first year as a uh, as a scare zone they really brought in they did their thing um i thought i even thought the steampunk maze a few years ago was good because it definitely did scare me um when i walked through and they had like these air guns and stuff so there was a lot to be worried and scared about uh, okay now the 4d or 3d or whatever it is the guardian zombie shooter game uh Basically, I did come in first place on my side, and then um, and then on the other side, someone else came in first place with a higher score than me. So technically, out of the entire round, I came in second out of all contestants that went. Basically, me, my three friends, and then um, whoever else was playing that day. But I would like to say about the Guardian. They have to. I I seriously think they need a better a better situation with these uh, with these lockers because the, like paying a dollar or two dollars or whatever or how much ever it is for these lockers just to go on the guardian is 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 killer man. It's like these lockers were almost specifically designed for for the guardian. It's either that or leave your stuff on the side. I don't really think that it's a great idea. It seems to be working, but I wish it would be a little more different. You know. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, and just like to me, that ride, the line kind of moved a little slow while I was at, while I was at Haunt. Um, and the weird thing was like when I was when I went back in the summer, it moved kind of faster and the line was a little longer. So I didn't understand how that concept sort of worked, but whatever. And, uh, but yeah, um, there is like, if you've never been on the Guardian before, it, it is worth checking out once or twice, you know, um, or even a few times because like it starts off as a slow ride and you're like, they spent how much money on this slow ass ride? And then it picks up speed and you're like, okay, here we go. Here we go. And then you go into this whole interactive shooting zombies or shooting, whatever you're supposed to be shooting, um, during the original, during like the regular season. So, Halloween Haunt this year definitely, like, you know, it got more interactive, and I think as years to, as years come, they will get more interactive. Um, I didn't get to see any of the shows. There was Talk City, there was this Mind Reader dude, and there was the Skeleton Crew, and there was also this, like, 
this like random band, random jazz band that just like played a bunch of like songs out of nowhere. It was it was very odd but very cool and interesting. And um, in uh, Brandon's video, he's got he's got that there, so you'll be able to catch some of that in the link that I'll drop. Um, this definitely did take some time to talk out, so I'm glad if you're still watching and still listening to all this, me rambling on, that's cool. Uh, something I'd like to say, I think Halloween Haunt needs to definitely step up their game on these Fright Passes and how people get to maintain them, because literally, I like we bought them, but then as we went through the night, I just kept finding them, people kept losing them, like I found them at rides, I found them in mazes, I was just like... This is crazy, you know, like you spent $40 on this thing, you know, you gotta maybe take it home, put it in a ticket book, it's a souvenir, you spent $40 on this thing, you know, and then you got this nice keychain, you know, you can rock it, you know, put it on your, on your keychains and stuff. Um, they were also selling this sick, like, skeleton hoodie, I didn't buy it, but I wanted to, but I spent $40 on this thing, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, yeah, so that's Halloween Haunt 2014 wrapped up in a nice little package for y'all, and I hope you enjoyed it. This um, review video, very informative, uh, tells you what to look forward to. Um, one of my dislikes is the fact that the Scare Zone Toys is not there, because I absolutely love toys, I love and adore toys, and um, the one year that they, one year that, that they were there, they had this adorable teddy bear. It was like so adorable. I fell in love with it. I wanted to give it a big hug. I think I did. But yeah, like the teddy bear was dope. And then, you know, I didn't get this. Like I went back this, that same year of the teddy bear. And I went back a second time. I didn't see it. And then I got sad. And then when toys came back, I didn't see the teddy bear again. And I got sad again. But, um, and then they're not there right now. So I don't know what's going on. But I do think if Toys was there, it would have been a great addition to that, to this, to the part in between, um, like, Vortex, you know, uh, or you could even have thrown Toys in, um, near Windseeker, because there's not much really going on there, but, uh, but I did feel like, you know, a great percentage of the park was definitely utilized with, um, with the scare zones, and like they could have even filled space in, um, in and around uh, what is that thing called? Near Splashworks, I didn't. I didn't even walk down that pathway, but you know, I think it. I think it would have been an open pathway to walk around. I'm not too sure, but yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Uh, when you do go to Halloween Hunt, if you continue to go this year or whatever do pick yourself up a Fright Lane Pass, because that way you have a Fright Lane Pass and you don't have to worry about the long lines for the mazes, so what we did was like, we chilled out and we went on some rides, you know, to kill some time because we knew that if we went off to, to a maze that had a big line, we can just show our Fright Lane Pass, you know, and be able to experience that maze at a faster rate, you know, so that's that. And, uh, yeah, so, Troublemaker here, Troublemaker out, one, oh, one other thing, sorry, um, you could also get, uh, fast lane passes for rides, or you could play these games around the park that, um, if you, I think it's like ten or, ten or five bucks or something, let's say ten, um, they find a way to charge you for a lot of things, <laughs> so, practically, you play like, you play this game for like ten bucks, um, it'll land on something that will be able to give you frontline access. So, um, Brandon, he actually had a few of these things around. So, with his access cards, he was able to get us um, to go on Behemoth twice, skipping the entire line, and then going on Leviathan once, which I thought was dope. And we, on the night we did Leviathan the first time, I did it in my t-shirt, and the second night on Leviathan, we all sat in the front, and we all wore our t-shirts. Yeah, so that, that was definitely an experience, man. Um, freezing cold and stuff like that. Crazy. Canadians, eh? 
Okay, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'm out. Hope you have a good night, safe night when you go enjoy. And do not touch the monsters, they will not touch you. Peace.